Jonathan Knight, new kids on the block. Thank you for making some time with us today. Um, we want to talk first and foremost about your TV adventures in Re um, in Renos, and um, now you're going into the third season of Farmhouse Fixer, which yeah, uh, the first episode aired Tuesday of season yeah five. Tuesday yep. Okay, so I read that you said that this is going to be a more intense season. Why is that? Um, this year there was just a lot of obstacles. Mm -hmm. Um. Things didn't run as smoothly as we had hoped, which is typical in construction. But it just it felt like just um, job after job was like running into issues with structure and permitting and all that stuff. But, um, you know, hopefully all that drama gets on TV and people can really see what happened behind the scenes. Well, I think it's really important for people to know that because people see this like big dream of like getting a farmhouse or getting like an older property and they forget about things like, I don't know, knob and tube wiring and like, yes. you, know, um, you know, houses dilapidating because, you know, the structure isn't great. So what is the most horrendous thing you have seen doing what you do? Um, well, this past episode, um, there was a, a a pipe burst over the winter. The homeowners live in... Los Angeles. So they didn't even know that the pipe burst and that their house was filling up with water. Uh, so by the time we got there, the house was just completely covered in black mold. And, um, you know, it was a lot of money to get a company in there to get the mold out. And the homeowners were, um, they were good sports about it, but it was, it was, it was a mess. But, um, you know, things like that, or we'll open up a wall and it'll just be completely rotted. Uh, you know, I'm like, I'm surprised your bathtub didn't fall through to the first floor and crush somebody. Um, you know, it's just old houses and you never really know what's behind the walls. So I think, you know, we always try to tell people when they are renovating an old house to make sure they have some extra money set aside just in case. Because you have no idea. Jonathan Knight, yeah. New Kids on the Block, also host of Farmhouse Fixer. Tell us about the special that's happening this summer. Yeah, it's uh, my first spinoff show, which is amazing. First of all, it's so crazy that I'm on HGTV. I mean, as a kid, I'd wake up on Saturday mornings and watch with my mom. We'd watch all the gardening shows. And, um, you know, when I started shopping my show around, I went to a bunch of different networks. And at first, HGTV turned me down, which is funny. And now, you know, here we are three seasons later. Uh, just very lucky to be part of the HGTV family. And so this summer you've got this special that's going to be airing, which is a spinoff. Yeah, that's, I don't oh, know, yeah, can yeah, you tell yeah, us yeah. anything about it? That's it. So um, me and my husband bought a lakefront uh, property with 12, with 10 cabins on it, uh, 10 little cottages right on the lake. And we began renovating last August. We're still, still renovating, still filming the show. Uh, so that, yeah, that'll come on right after Farmhouse Fixer and you can see the crazy adventures of me and my family trying to pull this place together. Oh my gosh. That's going to be a totally different dynamic too. It's like one thing to work with your crew that you're used to working, but then pulling the family and, uh, and your husband oh, and everything. And it's like, what is happening now? New drama. Yeah, and it, and it's usually, you know, on our show, it's me and Christina, we have mm -hmm. our opinions. That's two people. You know, I had six siblings involved in my mother and it just was like, why are you picking that light fixture? Why? Oh, you should have painted this color. It was, <laughs> it was great fun, but at, at times it was, it was very stressful. Okay. Before we leave the design aspect of things and start talking about music quickly, what would you like design wise, home reno wise to just go away forever? Like what would you never like to see ever again? Oh my goodness. You know, there's so much. Um, I just, I hate trends and there's just so many trends with, with fashion and music and even interior design. And, um, you know, I'm going to say I wanted to go away and I, just put them in my house but i hate light fixtures that are just a light bulb in the ceiling oh, it just it yeah. has, it's it's simple it's basic it just it has no charm but that's what everybody's doing these days no um, personality but just simple yeah no personality and i also hate when you know people take an old house and just rip out everything instead of working with what you have i always say if you're gonna 
got an old house, then just go build a brand new house and and start over fresh there. Just leave the history in the house. And a lot of people don't do that. Well, I love that you're doing that. I I live in a house that's 130 years old, so I, I appreciate you know nice. the, the character that goes behind it. Well, let's talk about trends in music, and let's talk about New Kids on the Block Day, which was Wednesday. And I know what it is, but for you know some people who may not know what New Kids on the Block Day is, could you please explain? Yeah, well, uh, our, the governor of Massachusetts, I think it was 1989, uh, declared. April, I don't even know what day New Kids on the Block was. Was it April 24th? 24th. Or 20, it was yesterday. 24th. Yeah. yeah, declared it as New Kids on the Block Day. And, um, you know, 35 years later, we're still celebrating every year, which is so awesome. Well, listen, so many of us are huge fans because, you know, for many of us, it was our first experience at a concert, like for me, my first concert was New Kids on the Block in a city called Saskatoon. And it was like mind boggling. I had no voice for a week and it was the best day of my life to this day. I, I did just the name Saskatoon. I love yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about the new single. New single came out on New Kids on the Block Day, which was yesterday. Uh, I love like yes. this, which is going to be off the new album. Yeah, the new album is so good. Um, totally overdue. Uh, I'm I'm so happy we have new music. It's just it makes touring so much more fun to add in a couple new songs. Uh, so it's 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 a little bit '80s retro, a little bit modern. Um, it's it's really good. I can't wait for people to hear it. Are there any collaborations you can let us know about? Uh, we did a song with DJ Jazzy Jeff, and <laughs> that's amazing. Uh, yeah, and. Uh, there's a there's another couple few collaborations that will will keep a secret. And we'll have to wait till May 17th when Still Kids comes out. Now, speaking of DJ Jazzy Jeff, obviously, New Kids on the Block, DJ Jazzy Jeff and Paula Abdul, part of the Magic Summer Tour, which is kicking off in Cleveland uh, June 14th. June 14th. It's going to be here before we know it. Wow. So you're busy doing like these rental shows. You're you're doing this filming, too. And you're like, wait a minute. I start practicing my dance moves to compete with yeah. Paula Abdul, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I'm actually filming right up to a week before I leave on tour. And, oh my God. Um, you know, I was I was hoping for a vacation, but that's not going to happen. I'm going to have my vacation on tour with all the fans and hanging outside on the, the, the pavilion lawns. And it's going to be just a, it's going to be an awesome summer. OK, let me ask you this. After all the years of touring, is there one song you love performing the most? Or are you just excited to perform something off the new album at this point? Um, I always look forward to doing something new. Um, I mean, I love our old songs, but after, you know, decades of singing them, sometimes you just get like, oh, here we go again. <laughs> and then sometimes I wonder if fans get bored. Like, like we've heard this song a million times, like give us something new. So, you know, with the new album, I think that's going to be uh, a great a great experience. Well, I'm never going to get sick of you guys singing cover girl ever in my life. So <laughs> or dirty dancing, but I'm very excited about the new album, which again drops June 14. Now let's talk about the magic summer tour. As we said, you kick off the tour June 14th in Cleveland. You'll be here in Toronto, August uh, 17th and 18th at the Budweiser stage. Jonathan Knight. Thank you so much for dealing with your falling phone and our Zoom call today. I'm so beyond grateful for speaking with you um, and forever grateful for the music that you and the rest of the guys have put out to make my heart and everybody else's heart so happy. Yeah, we're looking so forward to getting up to Canada. I can't wait.